Say so again? So if you plot it negative point, point 0.7 at 5, uh, 5 pi over 6. Right, so 5 pi over 6 is here? Yeah. And you want to plot negative point 0.7? Oh, okay, I get it. Never mind. Yep. So just face that way and go the other way. I like it. So you said 5 pi over 6? Yeah. I was there because I thought you were going to see 5 pi over 3. No. So here and then. 5 pi over 6 here. 5 pi over 6, and then you go back 0.7, so that's where I want to be. Wow. That kind of like completes the other side of my, my circle. So now just to show you a fantastically beautiful circle, you'd have to look at his name there. <laughs> it doesn't look bad. It's a Thanks for that. You know so, why? Because your standards have gone down. So it would start repeating that. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind. It's okay. So it would have started repeating. You're just making me seem like a horrible person. So it would have started. It would have started repeating before that. Like so, after you did. Yeah, this one is definitely gonna. It's gonna repeat after halfway, essentially. Because uh, you have five. sine and cosine, yeah. both positive, then both. Negative. Then it's different signs. Yeah, different signs. And when they're both negative, they'll actually be going back. So they'll still be adding together because they're both the same sign, but you'll be going back. So they'll start repeating that. Okay. So this wouldn't have been horribly long of a list. You only so need after one. After pi, you would have been repeating. Yeah, it would have been repeating. Okay. All right. All right. So I desperately, for me. Yes. What, what should we be doing or for the x squared y squared part? That was just to show you. Some of these problems ask you to transform this into rectangular also. So uh, just to complete this, so I get x squared minus 2x plus y squared minus 2y equals 0, right? Yeah. Is that cool? Complete the square would be... All right, just subtract the 2y, subtract the 2x, maybe put them with their, their partners. What do you have to put there to complete the square? Plus one. And then here, plus one. So then you get x minus one squared plus y minus one squared equals two. So you get a circle centered at one one. So one one is the center. That looks about right. Because, you know, these are radii, but I can also look at them as uh, x, y values, right? Uh, this with a uh, radius of two. square root of 2, right? This is r squared. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. That's kind of nice. Of course, they get the, the, the pictures look get a little funkier, right? This is just a circle. All right. So, I was about to say... For me, we got to get to the next section a little bit. So the A3, right? That's where we're headed. Yeah. And, I'll take. Let me, let me just, let me just throw this at you. I hate it. We, we've talked about this kind of thing before, plotting complex numbers in the most simple way you can. So one way to plot complex numbers is to graph their real part here and their imaginary part there. Yeah. So for example, if I had, um, what you got, Jim? 1 plus 2i. Yes, sir. You're not going to have us graphing imaginary numbers on the polar graph, are you? No. We're going to use uh, ideas from Polar to help us come up with a different way to represent this. So I, I'm not really sure how to answer your question. You'll see. We'll see if uh, it's not as hard as you sounds like you think it is. This is going to be very straightforward based on stuff we already know. So allow this to be old stuff. I'm just not calling this the y-axis. I'm calling this the i-axis. Right. So how do I plot 1 plus 2i? Yeah, it's crazy. Over 1 up 2. Crazy. Now, what's another way to... So we're going to use the idea of polar coordinates to come up with another way to represent that position. So that's why this almost... This should almost feel like we're not doing anything new, which is awesome, because we really aren't. But it actually leads to something... I should have worn my other shirt, where it's got that formula on it. 
Oilers and Enemy. We don't quite get there, but we get one step away from it. <laughs> What's up? I don't understand that formula. I've been looking at it on the backboard and whenever you wear the shirt and I never it, so. so unfortunately, staring at a formula will never help you I understand know, it. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, and there's nothing wrong with you. It's just you don't know what the hell leads to that. So we are going to get right up on the doorstep of getting there. And there's actually kind of a big step to take after where we end off. But it, we're almost to that point. Uh, we will. So another way to represent this. And, and, and I don't know if you guys remember, but the letter that we use normally for complex is Z. We saw that at the end of that section with complex, uh, where we learned complex numbers. When they said prove Z, complement, all that kind of stuff. So if you did that homework, you remember that. <laughs> or, yeah, or you just got a bad memory. But another way to represent this, of course, is there's an angle here. And what would this piece of it be? So this here is the uh, length of this somehow. We've got to figure out what that's going to be. So what would this here be? This is going to be the cosine, right? This will be the cosine part. So let me... Um, let me see how I want to say this. And actually, we could be, uh, this is a little too specific right now, but let's go ahead and be specific. So this is one, right? And that equals what? Cosine theta? No. Well, not really. So let's, let's do it this way. What's cosine theta equal to? One. One over. One over. Hypotenuse. Let's call that R for right now. Yeah. One over two. And what's sine theta equal to? Two over R. Two I over R. Yeah. 2 i over r. You say that? Okay. Well, let's just call it 2 for right now since this is measurement. We don't need the i. We will. It, it's, it's kind of like a. We don't write y if this is the y axis. We just write the measurement of it. But where we're going is a slightly different place. Um, let me see. What would r be? Yeah, exactly. So what is it? So square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared? 3 squared. Square root of 3. Do it again. Sorry? Square root of 3 squared. I don't know. I don't, no, I no, no. So 1 squared plus 2 squared? 5. Square root of 5? Wow, I'm retarded. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not aware. By the way, it sounded this one. I'm retarded. <laughs> no, you're not. This is new. Semi new. Plus two squared. Yeah, this is x is this x is two. Uh, x is one. Y is two. So you yeah, just forget about the i. He dropped it because it's a measurement. These are in units of i. I guess you could say, right? Okay. Okay. What are we doing so far? So if I let's see what I do here. So this is uh, r cosine theta equals 1, and r sine theta equals 2. Now that's sort of like, you know, that makes it as x is 1, y is 2. That idea. Cool. Yeah, don't we know r? What's that? Don't we know r? Yeah, now, so we could throw that in there if we wanted to, but then it would just be a true statement. So what I want to do is I want to kind of take one more step with this stuff and figure out how do I represent uh, a general complex number as uh, not even a point. I want to represent it as, um, what am I trying to say here? So here, what was A? What was A? One. One. Yeah. Right? And so A is R cosine, R cosine theta. <laughs> and B was two. Yeah. And B was R sine theta. Mm -hmm. So a way to write this in general then would be A is R cosine theta plus, and B is R sine theta. And then I just got to put in there an I, because there's an I there, right? So I'm really just replacing A with what it is, B with what it is. A is the X, bam, there's X, old news. B is the Y, bam, there's Y, old news. And the I is just there because it's a complex number. So then I get, you know, officially I get this guy. 
where R is known as the norm of Z. This book calls it the modulus. Which we know as a much simpler idea as the absolute value, but that has a larger meaning in mathematics. It's the distance uh, is what really the absolute value represents. So it's not always going to be just absolute value, but it always does mean distance between two points. Um, How do I get theta? Oops, I almost gave it How do I get theta? What represents, what relates what I know from my number? Yeah, beautiful. So tangent theta. Would equal B over A, right? The Y piece. So I sine over cosine. So just B over A. No, you don't need an I there. Definitely not. I don't want to try to do inverse tangent of complex numbers. Not yet. But that's eventual. And again, it's because the I represents the distance on this axis. So when I talk about lengths, I'm not going to include I. It's not an imaginary length. It is too long. It just happens to be two I units long on that axis. Now, we don't know this, but this, if I had to do this problem, uh, 3 minus 5I to the 12th power. I'm going to ask you to do this problem on the next test. Huh? And uh, we currently, the only way we knew how to do this is to do what? That times this out, then this out, then this out, then this out. Or that problem. We might be going in the direction of what you're trying to remember. I don't know if you've seen this stuff before. Like line, 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 line. Oh, Pascal's trying. Yeah. Yeah, even that would be kind of long once you get to the 12th level, right? Even just making the triangle to the 12th level would take a little while. So because we can write complex numbers in this form, we want to investigate what happens to, if I do z to the n, is there some simple way to figure out what this side is? And there is. There's a very simple way this side becomes. So what, now that we got complex numbers in this form, we can investigate, does that make working with them easier somehow? Anytime I change the form of something, I'm curious about, does it make certain problems easier? That is a problem that this immediately makes easier. Like it makes it stupid easy. Show. Show. So we're almost there. Oh, you're not going to show us. There's no time left. Tomorrow. All right. So tomorrow, we're going to focus on a finishing A3. We're only going to get through A3. I'm going to have A4 on the next test. Okay. So you don't have to worry about A4 homework. You're welcome. Thank you.